Brandon Chacon, a resident of El Paso, filed a lawsuit in the 6th Judicial District Court on December 11, 2013, alleging that two officers from the Lordsburg Police Department violated the New Mexico Civil Rights Act during a traffic stop on August 13, 2023. The complaint states that LPD officers Miguel Estrada and Jonathan Saucedo stopped Chacon for speeding. The officers requested to search Chacon's car, citing his nervous behavior as the reason. What's up, man? How's it going? Going good, sir. Was your first time getting pulled over or what, dude? Yeah. Okay, just because you're acting real nervous, man, so... Yeah, I'm just, um, Do you not have anything illegal in the car that I should no, be worried about? Just, any weapons or anything like that? No, I don't. <laughs> I was in where I thought it was 65 here, sir. Um, I'm Sergeant Estrada with the Lord and Police Department, right? So what's, what's the reason for the speed today, brother? Is this the first time being pulled over, or have you been pulled over before? No? Okay. Okay. Anything, or...? I'm just having a conversation, that's all. Simple conversation, right? Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Dude. What's up? I understand. Um, so with that, with that man, um, that's I have a, I have a couple quick questions. You seem like kind of nervous, okay? And like I said, I think it could be because of the the reason because you got pulled over by the police and you'd never been pulled over before, right? Like you said. So that's that's one reason, you know, but to the point where normal people that get pulled over by the police, they are nervous, but not extremely nervous, like you see. No? Okay. No, I understand. And so that's, like I said, you're not, you're just speeding. That's all it is. But the thing is, though, is that as far as police work goes and investigations, we do deal with a lot of different things on, side, you know, on the side of the road and stuff, and then people are doing things that they're not supposed to, okay? So I'm gonna ask you straight up, man. Inside your vehicle, okay, is there? Uh, nothing in there. Okay. I, I don't have anything. I understand, but this is, I gotta ask, man, just because of, for investigation okay, purposes. No uh, grenades, bombs, no. rocket launcher, anything really crazy? Do you give my officer consent to search the vehicle? I don't. No? I'm, the thing is, though, is that if I believed everybody on the street, I wouldn't be really good at my job, would I? They can smell it, too. And I understand. Like I said, it's just, I gotta do my job at the end of the day. I feel like it's not Yeah, and see, that's, well, you're you're entitled to your opinion, and so I'm entitled to what I have to do as a police officer. It's because I do, it's a lot of police work. I've been doing this for almost 10 years, brother, and the way you've been giving off the indicators, it kind of shows me a little bit of red flags. Like what? The nervousness. The nervousness is one. I mean, you're always the And I get it. We, like we said, it could be just because you, you got pulled over. Yeah. But like I said, we, we've done this for a while where we know something's up. And I'm not saying something's up with you, okay? But since you gave us, you didn't give us verbal consent to, uh, to search your vehicle, of guess what? We, yeah. It's my, it's my, that's, and that's it's my, that's In the eyes of a corrupt cop, any reasonable person would consent to a search. If you don't, it implies you're hiding something or have triggered suspicion. They're willing to violate your rights until they strip them away. To them, your rights don't matter. And it, and we're not here. We're not here to. We're not here to violate any of your rights. Yeah, I, but I thing is, like, reasonable like, suspicion as far as but, that. But that's me, me for. Are you keeping me detained here then? Until the dog comes, yes, because now I have reasonable suspicion that something might be well, in there. What's the reasonable suspicion? That there might be narcotics inside the vehicle. Well, we'll give to that. Just your behavior. But that doesn't really. There's a known traffic. Uh, there's a known route that there's a known route that people Just, take with it's narcotics. A, it's a U.S. This run, it's a US route. I-10. I mean, everybody can travel a, on the roadways. It's a U.S. route, though. It's Definitely, a, and it's, it's, it's a it's a highway. And you are correct. So I mean, it's I pull over people every day on this on this highway, on that highway. But I don't believe your so, concern is valid, though, sir. I just and want to that's something me. that you can probably bring up in court if there is something inside the vehicle. But there is nothing in the vehicle. And I don't know that. But you don't have to know that because there's nothing in there. And I understand. But the thing is, though, is I don't know you. You don't. I don't know. I don't know you don't know me. The thing is, though, is I'm doing an investigation at this time because of the indicators that I'm going to receive. That's all it's all. But I don't believe I have to stay here. This time. You could. You're free to leave, but the vehicle has to stay here until I get my, my investigation vehicle, done. My vehicle can go, though, sir. 
if you would like to, then you could be placed under arrest for obstruction. It's not obstruction, though. I don't have anything. I don't want... I understand. Like I said, you can say no to... Uh, you can give us... Why would I be... A, I don't really care about marijuana. I'm caring about the shit that's putting people I, yeah, away. But I don't feel that I need to be... Like, investigated for this. And I understand. Like I said, it's just police work, man. That's all we're doing is the indicators that we've seen. That's what we go off of. It's reasonable suspicion. Okay. Suspicion. Reasonable I don't, suspicion. I don't think it's reasonable at all. I think that's, well, that, I mean, that's, that's something that your peers, and if you I have to go to court because there is something inside the vehicle, that's, that's something that your peers at the, in the courtroom can decide. But as far as right now, I have independent reasonable suspicion, and that's all I need in the state of New Mexico. Independent reasonable suspicion? Yes, sir. I think that's... Like I said, that's, your that's, opinion, I, this is America, man. You're yeah, entitled yeah, to your opinion. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't I mean that you're right. I don't it doesn't mean that I'm right. I don't think you're, it, it's your opinion to have that reasonable suspicion, even though it's not reasonable at all. Who says them? Is that your opinion? Or it's, it's your opinion. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't think you have. And I have, right now, you are sure. legally detained at this time. For what? For speeding. And I think it was I, further now going into an investigation further about something that possibly could be in your vehicle. Yeah, so I mean. If the canine does show up and it does hit, I'm just going to be straight up with you. If it does do an indicator that something may be in it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to seize your vehicle. I'm going to no. conduct a search warrant, and then I cannot go into your vehicle until that search warrant is approved by the judge. So that's that's where we're at. I don't think that's reasonable at all. I think that's incredibly... Yeah, and I'm sorry I that you feel I that think, way, but I it's think, just what I we think, do every day, every day. I think, I think. It has nothing to do with you. Personally, I, I, I don't even personal. know you. I know it's not personal. The thing I is, is that that's what we're going on. I feel like it's just targeted, really. How is that? I don't know you. Yeah, I know. It's just, I'm just coming home. I know, but the thing is, though, as a reasonable person, and like I said, you have your rights. Believe I do me. Have you have your rights. rights. You have anything on your person, man? Because you keep, you keep trying yeah. to reach for that pocket. Is it okay if I touch you down real quick? Just make sure you have anything on you? Because yeah, you keep he, reaching he, for he that pocket. Turn it down. But I don't turn around for me. I don't and know why it's you're just on my face you, you keep putting because, your hands in your pocket. Because it's, it's not nice. Like, it's not I understand. Okay. And like I said, we're not violating anything. Everything is being recorded. So just understand that, okay? And we're doing everything by what the New Mexico state law requires us to do and allows us to do, okay? So as far as... As far as I understand... As far as what we're... So as far as like I'm saying, man, I know that you're trying to get home. We're trying to let you get out of here as soon as possible, but we're trying to figure out what what's um, any reasonable person as well, bro. If we ask, usually, you know, and like I said, you have your rights. Usually, if I ask somebody on the side of the road, hey, do you have it's, anything it's, illegal? It's, and if it's my, it, a reasonable person would deny a search. Not necessarily. Yes, it would. It's my right. And it's your right. It's your property. But I mean, yes, it's my. It just as a police officer, there is but certain I, things that we look for that indicate certain things and red flags. So I mean, you're not doing anything wrong per se. Are you keeping me detained here then? Until the dog comes. Yes, but you are sure. legally detained at this time. For what? I just want to get back home. I, I understand. I understand, man. It's eight thirty here. So yeah. when you get there. So the thing is, though, is that's where we're at now, okay? So... Chacon refused to consent to the search, but since the LPD did not have a K-9 unit, they called for assistance from the U.S. Border Patrol K-9 unit to search the exterior of the vehicle. The Border Patrol K-9 unit was nearly an hour away at the time. Officer Miguel Estrada insisted that his suspicion of Chacon was solely based on his nervousness and the route Chacon had taken. These reasons are unfounded and do not provide a legitimate basis for suspicion. Instead, they appear to be used as a pretext to abuse a Terry stop, forcing Chacon to wait for hours to satisfy the officer's overreach. A Terry stop is a brief detention or stop of a person by law enforcement based on reasonable suspicion that the person may be involved in criminal activity. This type of stop is named after the U.S. Supreme Court case Terry v. Ohio in 1968, which established the legal standard for such stops. Reasonable suspicion, which is a lower standard than probable cause, requires that the officer have specific, articulable facts suggesting criminal activity, not just the fact that a person was slightly speeding on a route the officer dislikes. Furthermore, regarding Chacon's nervousness, he appeared calm and collected, 
contrary to the officer's claims. We asked you for consent to search your vehicle, and I, that's your right. And, and that's right your right. Yes. No. Yes. Absolutely. And I guess but we can go another route. Yes, whatever. and then we have to we have to bring a dog just to make sure everything's okay. If everything's okay, then guess what? We'll give you your citation. You'll be good to go. I don't okay, man. I, I don't think anything. Okay. Well, I mean, we're beyond that now, man. The dog's coming, dude. So we'll, we'll take it from there. It's the dog. The vehicle until the dog comes. Do you have any questions so far? And it's not just going off of your uh, nervousness, man. It's going off of route of travel, going off of the story that you've given us yeah. so far. I mean, there's a lot of things that are. There's a lot of things that are. We're, so, thing is, though, is if it does hit, and we go, we get a search warrant, we tow your vehicle to the police department. You're not going to be placed under arrest or anything. We're just going to have to do a search warrant and then figure out what we do from there. Um, you are more likely to come with us and not handcuffs. You can, you're not detained. We're going to be using Border Patrol canine. Okay. So the thing is those, they use, they, they smell all kinds of things, yeah. narcotics, people, money. That's what we, that's the only canine that we have yeah. in this location. I wish we had a canine here because then it would have been easier, but we have to call for a canine. And that's what we do. It's a normal thing that we do on the highways when there's something that we feel is more, okay? <clears throat> um, if you'd like to, yeah, you can so just talk right here if you'd like to. Yeah, that's fine. Just, like I explained to you, man, you're free to start walking if you like it's just the car needs to stay here until i am 100 percent okay <clears throat> and like i said you can look up new mexico law if you'd like to it's just what we do on a day-to-day -day thing so i mean i've i've pulled over thousands of vehicles and i've had a couple of vehicles that are somewhat the same you know not want to talk to us like i said it's up to you if there is like i said man if there is marijuana in there obviously the dog is going to probably hit if there's something that's so he's trained for marijuana too, but he's trained for all, all narcotics. Yeah, I don't have any of that. Yeah, so he's trained for all narcotics, man. So thing is, like I said, I mean, we're gonna have to just see what we do as far as if a dog indicates or not. Okay, like I said, I mean, it's a it's a hassle, man. But I appreciate your cooperation with all of it. It's just it's not it's not something that we don't do on a daily basis. We do this all the time. No, no. Uh, we would have placed you in handcuffs. Um, we already checked that you had no weapons, so that's the thing. You would go in back of one of the units. We take you to the police department. Uh, you can hang out, out there until we finish, and then once we search the vehicle, if there isn't anything inside the vehicle, because I mean, like I said, man, there's there's hundreds of things that can be inside a vehicle, but we won't know until we get inside okay. of it. You're looking at the time. you're looking at the most probably about two to three hours, maybe. Because yeah, if yeah. we would have, and it's your right to deny consent that's 100 percent your right to but as officers we got to go further if we fill some things up okay if you would have given us consent to search you would have probably been already almost halfway home but that's your right that's your right so we're gonna we're not gonna penalize you for anything it's only narcotics it's not gonna do prescription or i mean anything like that it's gonna be for illegal stuff so Uh, it should be coming here pretty quick, man. We can get an ETA, uh, but like I said, it's it's coming pretty quick. He's the one with the canine. So right now, right now, if you want to just hang out here, um, uh, just, well, these are like uh, something that goes afterwards, yeah, like what happens if I yeah, say no, like a repercussion. No, no, you're, you're free to say no. But like, the way I failed to take my car, I go home. That's a these guys with things. It's. So, uh, you me the dog hit on the passenger side. The passenger side? Yes, sir. When the K-9 unit arrived, the dog alerted to a side door where Chacon had previously informed the officers he possessed a legal THC vape pen. Officer Saucedo then requested and obtained a search warrant from Judge Mark Thomas. However, the warrant made no mention of the fact that the K-9 unit had taken more than 40 minutes to arrive. The vehicle was impounded and searched but only the legal THC vape pen was found. 
Terry's stop must be brief and last only as long as is reasonably necessary for the officer to confirm or dispel their reasonable suspicion. Courts typically look at the totality of the circumstances to determine if the stop was justified in length. The Supreme Court has ruled that the length of a Terry stop should be as short as possible and no longer than necessary to complete the investigation related to the officer's suspicion. If the stop becomes prolonged without new justification, it could be considered a violation of the Fourth Amendment. In some cases, courts have found stops lasting around 15 to 30 minutes permissible, but this depends on the specifics of the situation, like the nature of the investigation or any visible dangerous situations. If the stop extends significantly longer without sufficient cause, it could transition into an unlawful detention requiring probable cause. The lawsuit alleges that the city of Lordsburg and the two officers individually violated Chacon's civil rights, including the right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures and false imprisonment. The complaint also asserts that the officers materially misrepresented information in the warrant application and violated Chacon's right to privacy and property. Chacon's legal team is seeking compensatory damages and attorney's fees. You call me the dog hit on the passenger side. The passenger side? Yes, sir. Uh, we're, just, we're gonna have to stop and get a search warrant. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. So that's the thing. Now that we have probable cause with the canine, now we can go further. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna seize your vehicle and we'll go from there. Like can I said, I, you're just, free to leave. Can but I go, Kang? Is it gonna take long if if how long would it's it gonna take time, brother? It's probably yeah. gonna take two or three hours, man. That's that's two just straight up on us. Yes, we gotta text up the warrant. I just we gotta get go. him oh, Okay, I, I get that, brother. Well, like I, I said, can, you're can free. I wait? Can I wait with y'all and just do this? Like I said, man, it's just if there's something in there, you could have just been honest with us and you're gonna yeah, save the yeah, whole yeah. trip, you know. But I, I wouldn't know if there's even anything in there, honestly. Have a seat, man, and then um, you could definitely, like I said, you're just gonna be so just have a seat, man, and then there's a seatbelt right here if you want to put that on for me. We go from there, okay? There. But as far as on the way up, I would call the DA and just ask Medina since it did hit, do we detain him or is he free to leave? Because I think we detained. 